Back now in Los Angeles. What a terrific return here for the Rams. A wild card berth, but the visiting Redskins with a field goal try coming that would effectively end this storybook season. It's a 39-yard attempt for Dustin Hopkins. But wait, I think we got whistles before the kick. Yeah, I think the Rams signaled timeout before the kick got away. There's Jeff Fisher telling the officials he wanted timeout. I think they got it in. Indeed, he got there just in the nick of time before the snap. Hey, listen up. This is a real good place to be right now. We can take it over. Let's shift it and put the pressure on them. So now all eyes back on the fourth-year man, Hopkins. He did miss one earlier from 42. Miss another one. Here we go. You're going to miss it. Miss it. From 39. Oh! Quinn over the top, and he blocks it. And the Rams fall on the football. Dang, man. changes the Rams are back in business and here comes the rookie quarterback Jared Goff. All right guys this is our time let's finish this thing right here let's finish it one play at a time run it down their throat whole line let's go right here let's go man just bring it Three minutes to play. The Rams come up on without question their biggest drive of the year. On first down, this is Gurley, running right. And a beautiful run to start the drive as he'll have another first down out past the 45. Todd Gurley, so good all year. 1,100 yards as a rookie, 1,600 this year. And they just want to ride him all the way through the final stretch of this game. Tough spot here, but they figure he can handle it. On first down, gone. Austin's got it left side. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now, the Rams at 11-5 and five this year. Some would say surprise winners of the NFC West. Now they need a touchdown to stay alive. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And a cut to the sideline. It's a gain of 24 that time. And it'll be first down Rams. And the Washington defense has to be kicking itself right now. They just let a rookie quarterback, Jared Goff, off the hook in a playoff situation. They let him hand it to Todd Gurley, and he just shredded him on the first play of this drive. Not a good look for the Washington defense, but a great start for the Rams. It's been more than a decade since either of these teams has won a playoff game, but one of them perhaps just a minute or so away from breaking that streak. Gurley again here on first down. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. Two minutes to go here in an NFC wild card game that is shaping up to be a classic. Back to Southern California after this. Watch left, watch left. They'll come out in the pistol. The throw on second down is gone. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And the defense lines up looking for one final stop. And they will be playing for the pass in this situation, not expecting any type of a run. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. And a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. The Rams come up on fourth down. One play remains to keep their playoff hopes alive. Desperation time for Goff on four. And no, it's incomplete. And the Rams fail to convert on fourth down. So their comeback bid comes. 
comes up short. Yeah, Washington escapes. Got no luck, baby. You see what we made of. Haters gonna hate, but y'all gotta come see us. Tate, Tate, don't sweat today, man. Do you know what? You're gonna be all right, man. Keep your head up. Keep battling. You know how this thing go, man. We'll see you back here next year. Los Angeles got their team. They made the playoffs, but their Hollywood story falls one act short. This is Madden NFL 17. NFL 17. Before we hit the gridiron, let's take a look at a few options. First up, very simple. Select your favorite team. If you're new to Madden, we recommend starting on either rookie or pro difficulty just to get your feet wet. Brandon Gaughton here to tell you about what's new in gameplay for Madden NFL 17. This year, the team focused heavily on three specific areas. The ground game, zone defense, and special teams. We have overhauled ball carrier locomotion, momentum, and balance. The special move system has been completely rewritten around a new defender fake-out system. We've added new feedback systems and an auto-move setting on rookie and pro difficulty levels to help users master the new systems. Finally, we have tackle battles, which will trigger a prompt that gives users more control to influence the outcomes of certain tackles. Defensive gap play is new to Madden 17, and it fundamentally changes the run game. Defenders now have true gap assignments, which result in moving blocks and cutback lanes. Finally, there's a new defensive auto flip feature, which ensures your defense is always aligned to the strength of the offense. We've expanded our zone coverages big time, going from four types to 13 unique zones. Pattern matching concepts are now featured throughout our defensive playbook, so you will find a wide range of strategic options to shut down whatever your opponent throws at you. And last but certainly not least, special teams. The new kick meter features three button presses, one to start the meter, one to set power, and the final press to set accuracy. Kick blocks and trick plays have also been added. So strategic special teams play calling is now a major factor in determining the outcome of games. So there you have it. Madden NFL 17, it's the most complete, deepest gameplay experience in franchise history. So what are you waiting for? Let's go get out there and show the Madden world what you've got.
everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory out on that field. It's Bell Steelers going up against Ingram Saints. With that, we'll send you out to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, where we'll check in with the two men calling the action, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you very much, Larry. As usual, the streets of the nearby French Quarter are alive as we are in downtown New Orleans at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon. To my left, as always, he's Charles Davis. And Charles, we saw in the open, we've got a couple of great running backs in this game tonight, each capable of putting a team on his back. And I'm excited to talk about the runners, not just the passers who have a big hand and who's going to win this game. Both of these guys are do it all, can run it, can catch it. I can't wait to get this one started. On to get us started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway from the Superdome. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first down, Breeze. He's got time in the pocket. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now Breeze. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll make it second down. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. That selection of a draw play felt a lot like, hey, we've thrown it a bunch, we can catch him off guard, instead of staying with what was actually working. Play action to Spiller, now Breeze. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Now the veteran punter for the Saints, Thomas Morstead on to punt on fourth down. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. So not much to speak of scoring-wise in this first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two, but likely not for long as they're in punt formation to kick it away. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, Antonio Brown. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Oh 
Brown, the lone receiver left. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Darius Hayward Bay, the intended receiver. CD, wanted to get your thoughts just on the landscape of the offseason for each of these teams. Super Bowl in the rearview mirror, but so much going on. People look at the draft a lot. But there's a lot more that goes into the offseason for these front offices, is there not? It certainly is. And that even before we get to the draft, you start with the combine. You know, that's held in Indianapolis every year. And you have about 350 of the top prospects coming together to get their physicals and interviews and on-field performance. And all that will get evaluated along with their game tape. And then you've got the free agents. All right, that starts, I believe, in early March. Where now the free agents can start moving around to different teams. So your team's starting to take a little bit of shape there, free agency, because then the draft's coming up. You're trying to put your team together with new draft picks, have everyone start to start to move in one direction. And then you have the OTAs and mini camps. We get to see them on the field for the first time. And we start to get a better idea of how these teams are going to look when the fall begins. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll check in with Larry Ridley for highlights and analysis of our first half of play. Now, not too many highlights yet, at least in terms of scoring plays, that is. Yeah, but hang in there. We might get something these last two minutes. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Second and 10 now, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. Here's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And the ball is knocked out. And as the referee is under the hood, and we're seeing this as well, he's watching the knee, isn't he? Similar to a bang-bang play in baseball where you're listening to the sound of the ball hitting the glove at first base while watching the runner's foot hit the base. Which one came first? Did the knee hit the ground, or did the ball come loose? than two minutes ago in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. Now Roethlisberger over the middle here to Brown. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Brown finishing 2016 with over 1,200 yards, 106 receptions. Now for him, you know, people were expecting maybe some bigger numbers. Charles, what did you make of Antonio Brown's season? Well, what I made of it is that he started to get more help along the way. Jesse James developed a tight end. Once Le'Veon Bell got into the lineup, he started to catch passes out of the backfield and ate up a few numbers as well. So Big Ben had more targets to throw it to. That should help Antonio Brown going forward in 2017 because he'll still be the primary guy. But when you get help, boy, you can make bigger plays downfield. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. On third and one, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. Now fourth down. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. And the New Orleans Saints put six up on the board.
Kai Forbath on for the extra point. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. There's no doubt about it. That's just one of the best connections in the league. Big Ben throwing it to Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown has turned himself into such a player. A low-round draft pick, but you can't beat his determination or work ethic. And Big Ben welcomes that. And Big Ben won a Super Bowl at 23, youngest ever to do so, has never looked back. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Nice play, baby, nice play. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. And caught right side, Green. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a gain of 17 that time. And the Steelers are going to have a first down. And now they're in the hurry up. Now Roethlisberger. And he rifles one incomplete. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Redley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Saints want to continue to give their fans something to cheer about in the second half. The Steelers know it's always hard to come in and get a win on the road, but they're not out of this one yet. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Later on the drive, Hearns is going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Okay, Larry, back here, 7-0 our score as we ready ourselves for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. It's Marcus Wheaton now to return it. There goes Marcus Wheaton. Pass the 20. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Marcus Wheaton, 98 yards. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And people still try to get back to their seats from the concession stand here at the start of the third quarter, and boom, we got points on the board. And you just identified why the bulk of stadiums have increased presence in the concession areas, right? TVs, loudspeakers, so people can still follow the game. And right now, they're bummed out that they missed that big return to start this half. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that one goes down as a 99-yard kick return for six from the one-yard line all the way to the house on the other end. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. 
What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. And that's going to be incomplete. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he comes back with one complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. 13 yards there offset some of the penalty yardage as it's second down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They'll come out in the pistol. On second down, here's Breeze. Surveying the field. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet inbounds. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Ooh, I like it. Bree's gonna throw. He's gonna leave this for his running back. It's complete. That's gonna go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, they tried to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. <laughs> they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. That catch good for five. It's third down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Breeze now. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. Pretty even matchup so far as we start quarter number four. Tie game here. Time starting to run down. The defense really needs to try and keep this game tied, see if they can get the ball back for the offense. Now a play fake here on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Offside defense. Still first down. Tie game late, and the offense really has to be conscious of the clock here as it's becoming a factor late in this ball game. They come out here in the eye. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. The linebacker, Ryan Shazier, there to make the tackle. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Lawrence Timmons, the linebacker, there to get him down. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run. But it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Here we go, here we go. 
They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. This is Ingram on first and 10. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. That was a really nice play to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Actually love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they usually know it as quicker than fast. In this case, now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. They come out here in the eye. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. An extra DB defensively here. Big stop needed on third and goal. He may be a blitzer. They'll try and run. Ingram. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Now that was a big stop on third down, and this is where head coaches make their money and answer the question right here and now. Do you kick the field goal for the three points, or do you go ahead and try and grab yourself a touchdown lead? And his kick is indeed good, and it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So it's not quite over yet, but you have to figure they pretty well got this one on ice now. And Brandon, I can't help but marvel at how calm these field goal kickers seem to be in situations like this. You know I'm shaking up here like a leaf, and I don't have to <laughs> kick it. This will be fielded at the eight. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won, <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.